What's going on, people? We are Tottenham TV. Um, we've lost to Leeds uh, in the early kickoff today. Um, not nice to start the weekend off. I'm joined by Gordon. Gordon, how are you? Firstly, how are you doing, mate? I was doing all right. Um, <laughs> well, yeah, weren't we all? Uh, yeah. What did you make of that, man? That was tough. Uh, I think we saw all the same things that we've been seeing all year, where we've slowly been declining and getting way worse. Yeah. Um, I think a, a bright spot was Delhi, though, so that was nice. Yeah, I mean, look, you're doing well if you're finding bright spots today. Um, I couldn't think of anything, really, uh, other than a five-minute spell in that first half when we did score a goal, a uh, disallowed goal. I just thought the application was really poor today, the attitude, the effort. Um, I thought there were no no standouts whatsoever. Nobody tried other than Lloris. Um, but, yeah, where do you think it went wrong today? I think it started with our fullbacks because we've been kind of leaning on both of them for most of this year. And Regulon has slowly been getting worse mm -hmm. since that injury. And I don't know what happened to him, but he used to be like, we were worried he was going to go to Madrid again. No, there's no worry about that. <laughs> <laughs> Madrid will pay us to keep him. Yeah. No, I, yeah, spot on there, mate. I thought the fullbacks were poor today. As, and how many times have we said that this year as well? Um, we can single out the center, the center halves all day, all day long, and and rightly so. But the, you defend, you defend as a, as a back four, and two of the four. Well, I mean, today all the four were poor, but the, specifically the fullbacks once again today letting us down. They got rinsed all game long. Um, I don't think that they get any help whatsoever from the midfield or from the um, or from the the wide players. And look, we just got picked off today. I think. Yeah. I think we saw that, especially because Hoiber has been slowing down, I think, mm -hmm. which isn't really his fault because we don't have any cover at defensive mid unless you want to exactly. put Harry Winks in there. Which Exactly. He's also, I think it was his 50th game of the season today, which is insane to play 50 matches in in, in between September and May, um, including three sometimes three games in a week. Um, but yeah, I mean... There were so many things wrong with today. What did you make of the team selection, the substitutions? I don't really want to blame too much on Ryan Mason, but what did you make of all of that? I really liked how we lined up today. I don't think there was anything that re really could have changed. Maybe putting more in instead of Delhi, but I think Delhi is was optimal in terms of being able to actually progress the ball with passing. Mm -hmm. uh, I was a little disappointed with La Celso. And I'm yeah. not sure if Nambale would have been better. I heard he picked up like a tweak in training, but I don't know if that's true. So if that was the case, I get resting him. But he is kind of necessary, especially in terms of his dribbling ability, because LaCelso literally dribbled it out of bounds today. <laughs> yeah, no, I remember that exact exact moment you're talking about. It's like FIFA. Yeah. When, when you don't really know what you're doing. Um yeah, that was really bad. Uh, so many things are going wrong from top to bottom of this football club, from the board and the, and and everything upstairs to the pitch, to the training ground, to the manager. Well, we don't have ma a manager. Um, so, what, what do you think? Come, what do you think happens next? What, what's the most important thing that you think needs to happen next? I think so. This season's washed anyway, right? Mm -hmm. Maybe we yeah. get into the league, maybe we don't. But this Lucky summer, enough. I don't think we're going to be able to really remove the board because that's you need to have a buyer and it's harder to buy right now with the whole global pandemic thing going on. Um, but I think if we can get a project coach for the next five ish years, maybe a little more that can help us get back into the swing of things and we might lose. Well, we probably won't lose Kane this summer cause no one can afford him. But if we lose Kane come next year because he doesn't want to stick around for a project, I think that's something we kind of have to accept because I don't see this team getting better the way it is right now. Like when you're looking at our high points, none of them are our younger guys. It's, it's Kane, who's 27 or 28, I think. Mm -hmm. Son, who's at the same age. And then there's a giant drop off to the rest of the squad. Yeah. Rest of the squad are average, mate. After those two, the rest of the squad are really average, and they're aging a lot of them. Toby Alderweireld's in his thirties now. Um, players like um, I can't even think off the top of my head, but players like Lucas Moura, Lamella that have been here for years, Lamella especially, 
Um, it's time we, we've got a really bad habit of holding on to players for far too long. That's not how you rebuild teams. You look at the, you look at some of the best teams. They they keep their players for four or five years, the majority of them, and then they then they get them out and get some new ones in. That's how it works. It's how you build and build a football team and be consistent. And that's the biggest problem we've got. Forget winning. We aren't <laughs> consistent enough to win. Um, so so many things need to change. Um, who would you like to see come in as as the manager? Actually, right now I'd like to see Graham Potter. Okay. He doesn't necessarily have the finished product that we're looking for, mm. but if we stick with him for a little bit, it's not going to get worse than where we are right now. Yeah, I agree with the, that. The near future. So if we keep him and we try to build sort of like how we were able to with Potch, mm -hmm. except now we have all of the foundational stuff. We have a functioning academy where hopefully the guys that we're bringing up are about the level that we want them at instead of, mid-table and we hit on a gem or two, I think we're going to be in a much better spot come 10 no, I, I, I like you thinking that. I think, Graham, I'm a big advocate for Potter. I think he's a really good coach. I think he's a really good man-manager as well. Great football identity, philosophy. That's what is important for me. I want to see a coach with an identity and a philosophy, which I think we haven't had since Potch. But you mentioned Potch there and everything you've said, you know, you said that we need a project manager. We need a project. Um, we just need this five-year project for the next five years to set us on our way. But that's what we had in Poch. All you had to do was rebuild the team. And we spent probably triple the money we probably needed to spend to rebuild this team in hiring a manager that's failed, sacking a manager, the same manager that's failed, and buying a load of utter dross yeah, that has got us nowhere. I think our biggest problem was coming off of last summer, we decided to kind of spend, and you can't go halfway. You can't yeah. be in guys like Doherty and expecting him to be a full, like a functioning fullback and compete with Aurier, who now we're going to have to sell for dirt cheap because he looks atrocious without any help from the back line. Oh, I don't know who's going to want to buy him. I, I, I'm surprised. Who's going to want to come in and spend millions of pounds on him? I've heard about links on like Twitter or whatever from like PSG, but only I'll for drive, like I'll drive in there. Yeah, it's I don't see a lot of profit coming back because we paid a lot more than that for him. And, and that's the problem. That's the problem. We like I said, we keep players for too long and then we end up not able to ship them out because they're here too long and their contracts are so short. And Daniel Levy asked for too much money. I think that was the case with Alda Vera. He had a year left or just under. And I think Levy was asking for 20, 30 million for a 30 year old with 12 months left on his contract. That's that's not how you run a football club and that's not how you run track. That's why we're where we are. And we ended up giving him a three year contract and he's now 32. So we have so many issues, so many issues to sort out. Um, in terms of, like you said, the season's done. Was there anything you'd like specifically like to see in the next three games? Anyone you'd like to give a chance? We've got nothing to lose, really, don't do we? No, I'd like to see. And this might sound a little weird, but I'd like to see um, guys like Sirkin and Scarlett yeah. given just a little bit of a chance. They don't need to be playing the full game, but just like 40 minutes, I yeah. feel like, would help the, both of their developments a lot. And we're not really losing anything by playing them. You know, we're giving Kane a rest because, you know, if he wants it, I'll, we can let him figure that out. He can do what he wants. <laughs> yeah. We'll keep him happy this year. Um, but I think Sirkin definitely needs to get bloodied just so we see who he really is. Cause we've he heard a bunch of hype from the Academy and Regulon, it's very difficult to do worse than he's doing right now. Mm -hmm. So I don't see why we can't see what Sirkin actually is before the, the coming years where we might need to count on him. Yeah. Uh, I, I agree. It would be nice to see them come off the bench in the last few games. Um, it's such a shame, you know, it would have been really nice to go into these last... Look, I didn't expect us to get top four, off, to be perfectly honest, um, from these four games, even if we did win all four. Because yeah. I thought the other teams would pick up the points as well. But what would have been nice is going into these last three games, especially going into Leicester on the final day, it would have been nice to go there with a chance, of, you know, knowing if we had won there, um, we could we could get into the into that top four. And it's just such a shame the way they, they applied themselves today. It was really, really, really disappointing to watch as a fan. I just I kind of want to know what happened because there wasn't like a a big event that happened for us this week. Like I could see it last week with the whole Super League drama surrounding the team, but this week there was almost no pressure. 
Mm -hmm. We no, saw yeah. Monster drop points to Newcastle, and then we decided to drop points to Leeds to keep it fair. Literally. And also you see as well on social media and in the interviews, the players took the talk. Oh, we want to give the fans a performance for, you know, for, for this season and whatever. This this group of players are very good at talking the talk and are very bad at, at showing it on the pitch. Very bad. And they have been, when it, when it comes down to it, we, every single time, no matter whether it's the title on the line, a cup final, the Champions League final, top four, top six, whatever it is, when it comes down to it, we do not produce. Yeah, I think the only person who can be happy with his performance today is Hugo. Yeah. No, Other than that, there's... he kept he kept it respectable, I think. Yeah. No, we would have gotten battered in the first half because he made at least two saves that the ball just should have been in the back of the net. Yeah, it's such a shame that we're having to sit here and with three games to go with with um, not much to play for it and have this conversation when we really should be sitting here saying, look, Let's give it the best we've got for the last three games and hope for the best. The fact that that performance is, you can see from all the fans, really, everyone's drained. This season has drained all of us. This game has sort of just, you know, been the icing on the cake. Yeah, I I think it's because we were so high in November. We are mm. like, sitting top of the league makes you feel so good and you, you get, you care more, I feel like, when you're there. Because if we had started in, like, eighth and stuck there, and then maybe had a little bit of a, a tilt up at the end. That feels so much nicer, and you're like you're you're rallying yeah. the team. Yeah. But we saw where we could have been, and we saw us. We saw the the. I think we won against Leeds for the the first tie. Yeah, and that feels significantly better. Like we know we can beat them, and they just didn't today because they didn't feel like trying. They didn't feel like putting. They didn't feel like winning the first ball. They didn't feel like winning the second ball. They lost to their individual duels. They got outrun, outplayed, yeah. out, everything. They got every aspect. They were outdone in today, and it's and it's quite honestly embarrassing for them, and and and, and it embarrasses us. Um, but listen, Gordon, thank you very much for joining me. Um, hopefully, next week when when we speak, hopefully we we at least win. Even though yeah. it doesn't mean much, it'll be nice to just end the season with a couple of wins. Um, but like, comment, subscribe, and as always, come on, you Spurs. Yeah.